Welcome, St. Stephen's and St. Ninians, to this service of worship. It's wonderful to have you joining us online. Let us pray. Father, we worship you, we adore you, we celebrate you. You are worthy to be praised. You are great and powerful, and we are small and insignificant compared to you. Yet you know us each by name. You knew us before we were born. You even know how many hairs we have on our head. You are beautiful beyond description and too marvelous for words. You are a faithful God. You are the creator of the universe with all its galaxies and stars. You created every plant, every animal, every insect, and every bird. We are not worthy to stand in your presence. But Jesus made it possible for us to approach the throne of grace with confidence. Our sin is washed away. We are washed white as snow. We are covered in a robe of righteousness. We become adopted as children of God. We get to call you Abba Father. We get to call you Daddy. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. You gave your son freely for us. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all our sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your nail-pierced hands. Now we are able to know your forgiveness and your embrace. Father, we thank you that you are worthy, that you are seated on a throne, that you reign victorious. Thank you for the kingdom that you came to establish on earth, that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not stand against it. We bring before you those in our congregation who are sick, who are suffering, who are in need, Fill us with compassion. May we be a caring church. Fill us with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. Fill us with the fruits of your spirit. We pray for wisdom for our leaders. We pray for the sessions of our congregations. We pray for the leaders in our suburb and in our nation. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, where are my little friends? Once upon a time, there were a group of people called the Israelites. And they were slaves in a country called e Egypt. As slaves, they were treated very badly. So they asked God to help them. And God sends a man named Moses to help them. And one day they managed to escape. In fact, the king of Egypt actually tells them they can go. And so thousands of people leave Egypt and start traveling towards the Red Sea. And then the king of Egypt realizes that he's made a mistake. All his slaves are leaving. So he sends his army after them with chariots and spears and swords. But God had a plan. He parted the Red Sea. And the people of Israel were able to cross on dry land. And then when the Egyptian army tried to follow them, the sea closed and they all drowned. God had a special relationship with the people of Israel. Wherever they went, he was with them. And he did some amazing miracles Sometimes they did bad things and God would punish them, but he always forgave them. Maybe you're going through some tough times in your life. I want you to know that God is with you. Ask him to help you. He loves you. And in the same way that God was with Moses and the people of Israel, he will be with you. Amen. How often do you hear people say that they are blessed? And they're normally talking about being blessed with a beautiful family, or maybe they're talking about the fact that God has blessed them financially. Even when we pray prayers of thanksgiving in worship services, we thank God for our blessings. The three passages of scripture that we will be reading today are taken from the Revised Common Lectionary. For every Sunday, there are four readings which are provided. Normally, one reading from the Puff Prophets, one reading from the Psalms, a reading from one of the letters, Sometimes letters of Paul and a reading from one of the Gospels. And this morning I'm going to focus on three of those passages. And the title of my sermon is How to be Blessed. Because each of these passages of Scripture tell us how we can be blessed. The first reading is from Luke chapter 6. Looking at his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who, are, who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. The first thing I want to, you to notice is that Jesus looks at his disciples when he speaks. And so what he is saying is aimed at them. We consider ourselves blessed when we are wealthy. But Jesus says to his disciples, blessed are you when you are poor. We consider ourselves blessed when we have food to put on the table. But Jesus says to his disciples, blessed are you who hunger now. We consider ourselves blessed when we are happy. But Jesus says to his disciples, blessed are you who weep now. We consider ourselves blessed when people like us. But Jesus says to his disciples, blessed are you when people hate you, exclude you and insult you. And reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. While these disciples were following Jesus, they experienced all of these things. They experienced poverty. When Jesus sends out the twelve and later sends out the seventy-two, he tells them the following. Take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, not even an extra shirt. This was the strategy we see Jesus using 
And this is the strategy we see the disciples using. And this is the strategy that we see Paul using in the book of Acts. They go into a town or city. Someone invites them into their home. And they stay as, as long as they are in that town or city, they stay in that home. And the Bible calls this person the person of peace. I believe that this person is someone with the gift of hospitality. Strangers arrive in a town and this person invites them to come and stay with them. This person of family would have influence in the town because of their generosity and their gift of hospitality. And that home becomes a base from which they share the good news about Jesus. People come to the house to hear what they have to say. The disciples also experienced hunger. Jesus tells them to take no bread and no money with them. They are totally dependent on the generosity of others. And I'm sure that there are times when they slept under the stars and went to bed with an empty stomach. If we read in Acts about the persecution the disciples experienced, being whipped and thrown in prison, they wept. They suffered for the sake of the gospel. They were also rejected and insulted for the sake of the gospel. And in Luke chapter 6, Jesus says, Even though you are poor and hungry and sad and rejected, you will be blessed. For yours is the kingdom, for you will be satisfied, for you will, be, for you will laugh. He says, instead of being poor and all of those things, yours is the kingdom of God. You will be satisfied and you will laugh. And in verse 23, he says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. And that's not all Jesus says to them. He says, but woe to you who are rich, for you have already see, received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for, the, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. And so which one are you? In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says something similar. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth. Where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so are you blessed using Jesus' definition? Are you storing up for yourselves treasures in heaven? Or are you storing up for yourselves treasures on earth? Are you going to receive the great reward that Jesus talks about in Luke chapter 6? Are you blessed? I'm going to turn now to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 to 8. Jeremiah says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Jeremiah also tells us how to be blessed. Those who trust in the Lord are blessed. This is what the disciples and Paul did in the book of Acts. They trusted the Lord. They were like trees planted by the water. When heat and drought came, they continued to trust in the Lord. But trusting the Lord is, is not easy. The transition for me from youth ministry to becoming a real minister has not been an easy one. And at times I've really struggled to trust the Lord. But when I look back, I can see that God has been faithful every step of the way. He was with me when I did my honors at the University of Pretoria. He was with me when I went to the discernment conference to test my call to ministry. He was with me when I searched for a congregation to do my probation in. And he has been with me as this process of forming a shared ministry between St. Ninians and St. Stephen's has unfolded He's been leading and guiding. Last year, we sent out letters and asked for help to pay for school fees. And we raised enough money to pay my children's school fees for the year by the end of January. This year, we've again asked for help and friends have donated 20,000 rand towards school fees for my children. I know that God will continue to provide if I trust in him, but it's not easy. Earlier on in Jeremiah chapter 17, the prophet says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and his heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes, 
They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in the salt land where no one lives. They say that the salt land is the place where God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The disciples trusted the Lord to provide food for them. They trusted the Lord to provide clothing, clothing for them. They trusted the Lord to provide a place to sleep. But it's so tempting to put our, place, our trust elsewhere. When we trust in man and when we trust in flesh, we are like a bush in the wastelands. And so whatever obstacles we face, we need to be reminded how powerful our God is. He is the God who set his people free from slavery in Egypt. He is the God who parted the waters of the Red Sea for Moses and the people to cross on dry land. He is the God who was with them in battle. He is the God who helped them occupy the promised land and defeat the people who lived there. He is the God who anointed David as king. He was, and, and, and it was a blessed time for, the, for Israel. He was the prophet Elijah. He was with the prophet Elijah when he took on the prophets of Baal. He is the God who brought the people of Israel out of captivity in Babylon to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and the temple. He is the God who healed the sick, raised the dead, and cast out demons when Jesus was walking on this earth in human form. He is the God who raised Jesus from the dead after three days. He is the God who created the universe and the earth and every star and every atom and molecule. This is the great and powerful God that we worship. In Psalm chapter 1, we read these words of the psalmist. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. We are blessed when we delight in the law of the Lord, says the psalmist. In the New Testament, the writer to the Hebrews says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And so how much time do you spend meditating on the word of God? The psalmist meditates on the law day and night. In Jeremiah we read, It is... Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. In James, the author says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And so we see these three different, four different pictures of, of the word of God. It, it's a two-edged sword. It's a fire. It's a hammer. It's a mirror. And so when we meditate on God's words, we are blessed. Are you blessed? The Bible says that we are blessed when we deny ourselves and follow Jesus. The Bible says we are blessed when we are poor and hungry and weeping and rejected. The Bible says we are blessed when we trust in the Lord. The Bible says we are blessed when we make the word of God central to our lives. We are blessed when our focus is on a reward and treasure in heaven instead of a reward on this earth where moth and rust destroy. We are aliens and strangers in this world. We have different values to the consumer culture around us. Jesus calls us to take up our cross and follow him. When the disciples of Jesus took up their cross and followed Jesus, they changed the world. And if we want to make an impact in Parkta, North or Resentville, then we need to focus on storing up treasures in heaven while we are on this earth. We need to deny ourselves. And when we do that, we will be truly blessed. We will be like a tree planted by the waterside. Amen.
Here I am. 